eyes close and dreams go free Got an angel next to me Hold me close so I can breathe Let me go so I can live Where do we go from here? Take me far away So we can stop the time And love will take its place Where do we go from here? Take me far away So we can stop the time And love will take its place It will be tonight when I Turn off the world for you It will be tonight when I Turn up the stars for you right, Namaste and like catch my family and welcome to another Team Light Interviews with my brother, Rich Lop. Rich, what's up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? Dude, this is some Marvel team up, dude. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I feel like, you know, two peas in a pod. We both have our experiences dealing with the the Matrix and, you know, mm-hmm. the stuff down here. But I just wanted to, you know, do another episode with you because I feel that there's a lot of changes going on in the earth right now. And I feel like the best thing we can do is kind of put like minds together and kind of get a game plan, you mm-hmm. know, for what's what's in everyone's best interest, at least lay them out so people yeah. aren't confused and the main thing is trying to remove the fear out of the yeah. situation because we already talked about it two three weeks ago you're like oh no this is what they're going to do here's kind of some of the plans they're playing with so we're not just you know waiting for something to show up so i know we were discussing a little some stuff briefly before we started what do you think's kind of like the most important thing right now for everyone kind of you know getting into you know 2024 and maybe some of the things Uh, that we should be paying attention to? Well, like I said, I I wanted to kind of dig a little bit deeper on some of the things that I talked about last time. And my big thing is I really want people to understand the the energetic functionality of this matrix apparatus that we live in. And there actually is science behind it. I know that in the mainstream and even people very popular on the internet, still kind of speculate some things that I'm not saying they're incorrect. um, But I I think that one of the biggest problems and one of the reasons why what I specialize in being manifestation uh, is kind of starting to lose popularity over the last few years is because a lot of the people who are teaching and helping people understand how manifestation works they're not really breaking it down and explaining it from a scientific perspective, which is actually the only thing that I ever set out to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I, like I indicated in the last interview um, I've connected with and learned from people connected to very, very high places, the highest places in the world. And that's where I learned the actual science and quantum physics behind how it works. And uh, especially at the event, that's what I'm going to be talking about, uh, because they do have the tools and the technology. They know the science from from the quantum physics of how this matrix operates down to the neuroscience. And right. you, you absolutely as an individual have the power to take control of it and and not only just make your wildest dreams come true, that 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 isn't what it's all about. I think that's. Another thing, I want to steer it in a different direction because, right. you know, so many people think that it's about making money and about attracting love relationships. And that's not what it's about. You can do that with it, but mm-hmm. it's about in these times right here with the things that are coming here in the future, when when they start really throwing distractions at you and the shit's hitting the fan and whatnot, right. you'll understand how to navigate your way through all that if you understand how manifestation works and the functionality of this matrix. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? No, no, 100%. And, you know, the main thing for me is that the true thing that this whole control program is scared of and the real thing why they were, you know, so hush-hush about UFOs or UAPs is simple. The power source. 
Why did they cover up everything from Tartaria? Because they were using ether to power the buildings. Why are all these towers, why are all these structures used to harness ether? What was mm. Tesla talking about back in the day and the, his, his uh, uh, building he created in Colorado and how they copied it and put it in the New York skyscraper and then put, you know, you know, <laughs> a mm. molding over it so you couldn't see it. Yeah. Um, my main thing is freedom. My main yeah. thing is what they're trying to steer us away from. They're trying to put the population in these smart cities where they can monitor everything similar to Dubai, where if, you know, a lot of people, you know, you can get a, a speeding ticket in Dubai and there's no cops there. You can get, if you get in an accident, they already have the video of the guy, you know, of the, this, whatever is going down, even if the person takes off. Hmm. Here's the thing. Technology used in certain specific ways for safety. Yes, I agree with. However, that's not what they're being used for. I feel in the future, what's going to happen with the people in our generation is we've about had it. Okay. Yeah. And I'm talking about the, you know, say your twenties, thirties, twenties, you don't know yet. Thirties, you know, try to buy a house right now, dude. I, mean, I don't know <laughs> yeah. if I was born in the seventies, I'd own the whole cul-de-sac. You know what I mean? Now yeah. it's like, it's ridiculous. I, the, 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 the misallocation of resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, the main thing for us is, I believe, bringing some of the technology forward. And I believe that's really mm -hmm. what these guys are really scared of. Because once we have our own ability to, like, dude, even if you had, I mean, the, the guy that built the magnetic motor that could power four houses, you know. Yeah. You have one of those in a neighborhood. You guys go buy land and that's good land in the middle of some place, like a couple hundred acres. Mm -hmm. You have a, your own power supply. Guess what? You have power supply for all the houses. You can you have a power supply to, for the, to pull the well water up. You can irrigate all of your crops, all of your plants. You need the power source. And I think that's really what these guys. And to be honest with you, uh, you know, being a huge fan of Jacques Cousteau, give you a little history lesson. Um, with that and how he found all those oil wells underground and underwater in the 60s and how, you know, Dubai and Saudi Arabia and some of these places really came up on the map. I don't feel that any culture or country on this planet should be able to wield things because what I see as kind of a star being like you are in, you know, in disguise is how can you have so much wealth in one por portion of the planet while there's so much poverty in another. And mm -hmm. all that shows to me is that misallocation of resources and the wrong people. And, that, and look what they're doing in the Middle East, just to be clear. They're building the wall, that mm -hmm. huge structure that is going to be like, they're basically building like Star Trek in the middle of a desert. Did you see that the, that video of what they're building out there, Rich? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, the cultures and countries are already ahead of the curve. Look, if you've ever been in Japan... Mm -hmm. Go look how far advanced they are compared to how we live in the United States. It's nuts. Yeah. Everyone has a bidet. Everyone's toilet talks to them and massages <laughs> them while they're going to the bathroom. No one needs toilet paper. So, yeah. I mean, that's a, a very small example of how we need to kind of come together as a culture, as a planet, as a community, share some of this technology and really unpeel ourselves from these controllers who've been making up money off us and let's be honest some of the most laziest people on the planet are the ones we're taking orders from brother yeah yeah and that, that's another thing about this is what's so important about why people should understand how powerful they are mm -hmm. is because if every last one of those people in one of those poverty stricken countries was to awaken and understand how powerful they are that whole game would fall apart overnight you know, and absolutely. Yeah. With, with this new world that we're moving into it, it's very important that the people awaken on their own because, you know, I think even, even some of the most awakened people, you know, in the spiritual community today are still under the, the erroneous misconception that one of these days, somebody's going to come in and save us. And that's not the way that it works. We have to awaken and stand up and save ourselves. And they're going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until we do that. And uh, one of the biggest issues with humanity, period, is that humans don't understand how powerful they are. Mm -hmm. they, they don't believe that they have any kind of power over their own life. And if if what keeps me awake at night is I'm always trying to figure out how to say that one thing that makes it click so that people understand how to trust themselves. Right. And yeah, that's because the world that we're moving into, all the things that you just talked about, the, the technologies and whatnot, that's mm -hmm. coming. That is yes. absolutely coming, but they're not just gonna come out and give it to us. No. We have to awaken 
if that makes sense, you know, a hundred, a hundred percent. And I mean, even these guys with the patent office, you know, I know a lot of guys that worked in some of these projects that, you know, um, this is a little skunk works guys that are out here hiding out in the desert. And here's the truth. It's like the technology has been around for 80 years. Mm -hmm. The issue yeah. is that the problem they have, we're releasing is like, how do we tell the public we've had this for 80 years oh, yeah. and you guys are living in medieval times. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what they're concerned of. And, I mean, yeah. dude, I mean, medieval times. Now, I mean, you, you know, people act like, oh, I have a. Here's the thing about this planet right now, and how it's a little different from Atlantis and, um, you know, Tartaria. The technology that is in that phone that you, you know, you're watching this broadcast on has more <laughs> uh, computational uh, power than what they launched the first spacecraft with. That was mm -hmm. the size of a room. People don't realize that. The, yeah. Remember when they started to recall all the PS2s back in the day? Because mm -hmm. it was the same operating system, how much power you would need to like launch a Sidewinder missile. They're like, oh, oh my wow. God, it, it's a PlayStation. You're like, yeah, but if you take four PlayStations, it can do some serious stuff. So what I'm getting to is, you know, especially with, you know, <laughs> we're so funny as humans. We're like, we want better you know, CGI, you know, you know, Xbox and PlayStation four, they're like, all right, it's eight K it's in your head. You're moving through. Now we have things that are like simulated reality with like the Oculus and all this stuff with the technology. We've gone so far into the red on the technology function of it. We're not really seeing how, you know, we're using it as a, a complete distraction. Yeah. Yeah. instead of like, well, how can I have this work for me and do something better? Now, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, say AI and see, you know, AI is a friend. Here's the thing about AI. I share the same issue with AI as David Adair does. This is the issue. And this is part of our 2024 predictions. Okay. Whenever you create something that has the computational ability to outthink you, right? You know, look at Elon Musk thing. If you take that level of consciousness and you give it power, you give it the ability to self-replicate, which apparently David Adair said the Pentagon did, you know, 10 years ago, where it has its own warehouse where it's putting itself together. Whenever you step out of the way, your morality and your integrity also stepped out of the room. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to get to is anything that has a level of consciousness is going to want to survive and exist. Mm -hmm. My question to you is why have they wiped this planet so many times? No one yeah. wants to open that bubble gum. Oh, you don't think they had AI in Atlantis? Yeah. Really? You, you, you know, and it, you know, you don't think that we had high levels of technology before? Let me tell you, yeah. we did. What is it that we need to learn about it? Now, listen, um, I listened uh, to this broadcast by Gosha. And this is kind of give you guys some, you know, some understanding of what the real probability is. She said in the Pallades star system on her galactic messages on Gaia that 99.95% of all of the planets in the Pallades, there's only like 9 to 11 uh, civilizations or species that are interstellar. 99.95% are not interstellar. Hmm. Okay. So put that in perspective. You're like, whoa. I mean, like, I thought like getting on a spacecraft going through a portal is normal. It's not. This is Earth. Even though like we're being hidden from the truth, just our level of understanding how to do that is very advanced. Okay. Mm. So what I was thinking to myself is why? Why would you choose not to go visit your local planet? Why would you choose not to go? And my thing that really catches me is what is the morality and integrity of the beings flying those craft? <laughs> Yeah. What is the respect? What What is the MO? What is the motivation? And, yeah. You know, and what I'm getting to is that I think, you know, right around the end of World War II, when the Germans ran to Antarctica and they kind of, you know, befriended or best friended the draconians, some of the reptilians living in Antarctica, they learned some naughty behavior. And yeah. I don't know if you know this or not, but when they first did that negotiation, it was like 200 of like 100 or 200 of them had to go with the draconian like that day. Like it was like, a, all right, you hand us 200 people. We'll start working with this. And that was like one of the gnarliest things that even the dark fleet or whatever this is ever did, because those people were like, it was basically like, sac I mean, I don't know if it was sacrifice, but they were really messed with. Mm -hmm. What I'm getting to is that who are we learning from? 
Who are we going? This is how you become an interstellar species. Oh no, this is how you become an interstellar species. We're, you know, you have to have big guns in this and take things over. That's how we did it. Well, I'm, what I'm getting to ladies and gents is who are we taking orders from down here? My brother's yeah. talking about manifestation, how powerful you are, how you can manifest your dreams and manifest your reality, right? What is this other voice or voices coming through the pipeline that wants to use and manipulate you to get what they want? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what this is about. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I'm not to, you know, go too far down the, the wormhole with you guys, the rabbit hole, <laughs> the wormhole. It's just that this thing's been going on for quite some time. Why did the Rockefellers take over? You know, why didn't, why did everything change in 1915? They started changing all the history books. Why? What was the creation of the public school system, 1925? What was the creation of the pharmaceutical situation? Why did they start to change all of our natural homeopathic cures and do this pharmaceutical thing? What happened? Mm -hmm. And see, because we're dealing with this now, right now, we're like, oh, yeah, we're in our 30s or 40s. We're figuring it out. We're dealing with shit that was created 80, 80 years ago, 100 yeah. years ago. And we're like, that's why it's so confusing here. You can't see all this jazz and negative stuff they've set up to mm -hmm. be here right now. That's why it's so, you know, so um, confusing well, with that. The you know? paradoxical thing about it is that it's, it's, it's extremely confusing, but it's very simple at the same time. That's right. the thing. The, the most, the thing about it is, is that when this version of us humans was first created 200,000 years ago, the beings that created us intentionally created us to be more powerful than them. And they know this. So that's why they knew from the minute they they took the DNA with the, the hominids that existed on this planet and spliced it with theirs to create us. They knew that the only way that we could be the perfect race of slaves is if they make 100 percent sure that they take control of our beliefs and our perceptions, because in this particular corner of the universe, the most powerful force is the human emotion and belief system. And they know this. They've right. known this the whole time. So they they knew from the minute they first created us that if if we let these beings know how powerful they are, it, we're we're done for. We're we're over. Right. You know. So that's what has to come to an end. That that misunderstanding of how to use our focus and what we're focusing on and what we're paying mm -hmm. attention to and and the beliefs that we're telling ourselves and how we feel, taking control of that and taking power of that is right. is what is so important because. You know, the, the more people begin to awaken and understand how they work and how this all functions mm -hmm. and operates, this whole game is going to keep crumbling and crumbling and crumbling to the ground. It unravels. It's almost like an onion. You keep breaking through the different layers and all of a sudden you realize that there's not as much uh, control systems as you might think once you get above a certain level in your own manifestation or reality. You realize like, yeah. hey, it's like this whole planet like down in this density, right? And, you know, third density, fourth density. You think like, oh my God, there's so many beings here. Well, let me explain something to you, ladies and gents. Keep going upstairs. That number drops dramatically every single dimension or higher vibrational floor you go. It's less and less and less and less. It's not the same population as it is down here. So we're bumping shoulders with a lot of different beautiful beings. I want to, first of all, tip my hat off to all you guys. I love you. Okay. And to all the guys watching behind the scenes, you caused enough collateral damage that you cannot comprehend the beings that are actually showed up and incarnated in this game. And I've said this for the last 13 years because keep, they keep trying to show me they don't know that their bosses are here actually in suits watching them. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? Because like, hey, I'm, we're wearing human suits, the hue of manifestation, right? That doesn't mean my soul is 100% human, just like your soul. I mean, we could be Lyran, Andromedan, you know, Nordic. Uh, mm -hmm. I can have a little, uh, you know, dragon in there, a little, little Anunnaki in there. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is like, what are we trying to learn here? Truly, how to get along. Syrians, got to put the Syrians in there. How, how to get along with one another. And for this 2024, you know, back to some of the predictions, I'm going to kind of start right into this. Obviously, the financial reset will happen within this year. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think obviously that within the financial reset of, uh, I think for everyone in the United States, we do not want the central bank digital currency. We, we don't want any sort of a facelift. We do not want to be operating under Project Dragonfly like they have in China, where mm. they monitor your social credit system. I'm sorry, that's not freedom. 
That's a complete draconian situation they got going on over there based yeah. probably up upon their population being so large. I think yeah. it's hard for like, you know, people in America to consider like, yeah, imagine if there's like one point, I don't know, eight billion people in the United States. Like that's insane. Right. Yeah. But I think within that, the financial reset and for me, what I really see through all this darkness and some changes is the true leaders of the human race stepping forth and building these new location, building these cities of light, building places and gardens for our family to live and kind of stepping out of you know, this soil, you know, it's almost like a beautiful sequoia tree, tree being grown. We spent our entire existence so far living under the soil with moments of us, you know, a little seedling popping our head out and looking around, right? Say you're awakening. Well, what I'm trying to say is let's not stop there. Let's keep growing through that soil into the light. And then who knows what we're going to create? Ladies and gents, this is some things you, technology is cool. Okay, let's talk about this then. We're going to have med beds, the real ones, Within what, five years? Oh, yeah. What if I said in 10 years, we could age reverse 30 years? What I'm trying to say is that you never really put in perspective in 10 years, if we really have the age reversing med beds, we could be here a lot longer than you think. We could be here 347 years, 600 years, 900. You, you, what I'm trying to get to, you release that into the public and all of a sudden your whole belief changes goes, wait a minute. They've been talking about these med beds for quite some time. The main reason why I think the med beds being released is to remove some of the stuff that's been done to us with that jib jab. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the level one. But what they don't talk about is the level two of the military based med beds, which actually can re uh, grow an regrow arm, or regrow, arm. Yeah. regrow a leg, you know, so all through vibration, frequency, and plasma. So. Mm -hmm. We have to stay positive and just kind of, you know, really sit this. You know, we, we, we can't leave. We sit on the front lines and we just have to sit this out as these powers or principalities finalize this jazz. You know, what do you yeah. feel about that, brother? Well, yeah, yes. But again, again, it goes back to the most important thing that we have to understand. We have to awaken and fight back. So I am a very firm believer that this year, the next two years are going to be scary as hell. I'm not, I don't believe that we're just going to wake up one day and we're going to be on the new earth and everything's going to be beautiful. The old system is going to crumble and the new system is going to come into effect. And it's not going to be a fun process for some people. Some people are going to get the crap scared out of them. Now I firmly believe that they're going to roll out the CBDC, but we mm -hmm. have to reject it. We right. have to stand up and reject it because the whole thing is, they want us to take the planet back. They don't want to just give it to us because if they just give it to us, we'll end up back in the exact same position in the next 50 years because we didn't learn anything. Right. Does that make sense? No, no, no. That totally makes sense, you know. And it is. It's all about growth. Like, you know, I feel that we're all in emotional rehab. I've asked my guides many times, like, what is this place? And why do I keep getting these tests? And what are these experiences? And, you know, my dream time is not dream time. I'm multiplexing at least three or four different dimensions when I go to bed, right? Especially sleeping in a pyramid, um, yeah. you know, which, which we make um, here at Team Light. But the main thing is that, like, what is the main function of what you're doing? I am harmonizing, transmuting my reality and how we make changes down here with our hearts on it affects the entire multiverse. You know what I mean? At some point, listen, your higher selves, let's just say this. And like, say we're the, I like to call us, remember the, the Eddie Murphy movie, the golden child Remember from yep. the eighties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Check it. We are each the golden child in our family, especially, right? We don't realize that what I'm trying to say in this dimension, being the golden child within your stream is you got two different types of polarity. You got your negative night side polarity on the right. You got your light side, you know, beautiful, abundant polarity on the left, angelic. Now, here's the question, though. Given that power back to the child, what are they going to choose? Mm -hmm. And here's the issue. If we're distracted the whole time down here with look at this new video game or look at this new thing or look at you never look inward. Everything is out outside in. You're not going in. Right to find out who you are, why you incarnated, what is this all about? And that's the huge distraction. Mm -hmm. It's really a battle for your focus and mm -hmm. your energy because if everyone, you know, 500 million people, let me tell you something, focus on one thing right now, for better or for worse, that's gonna happen. That's how our consciousness works. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing right now is to not go into fear 
and be prepared for the things that are coming in 2024, 2025. I know Bashar and some different channelers said we're going to have contact in 2026. Let's just say some at some point. Okay, so if we're sitting here right now and you told me we're going to have ships coming down in the next 500 to 700 days and every single time is a countdown. Every single day is getting closer to that moment. My thing is I don't want a shock and awe campaign. And I don't want people to be hoodwinked and pulled into some fear thing. I want people to be able to speak on their own behalf and use their own discernment and let their vibration guide them to what's the, they're in their best interest. Mm -hmm. But like I agree with you, the, our star family is not going to come down here and fix our problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we mm -hmm. got ourselves into this. Now, that being said... There's been a lot of artificial timelines, uh, species that have jumped back in time to do weird shenanigans on this planet. Okay. Mm -hmm. When people say the Agarthans have been here for 20 million years or whatever this, these huge numbers they throw out. Yeah. They po time portaled back in time, that distance. They weren't sitting in an underground cave for 20 million. Like, there's a lot of different, you know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. beings that jump back through time yeah. to be here. So, um, there's a lot of different interpretations of the stories. My thing is that in coming from your heart, but knowing at least we're opening your minds to, wow, I didn't know there's other inter interstellar species on earth. I'm like, yes, there are. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that we had all this advanced tech. Yes. Solar warden's been around for 80 years. Look it up. Oh, yeah. oh. I forget that one gentleman's name. Uh, gosh, he hacked air the air force servers to find proof that UFOs and UAPs were real. Yeah. And instead of finding that, I forget his name, you guys can look him up. He found all of the off world officers that were off world collecting a check from the US government. <laughs> and he was like, what is this? I'm looking for you know, proof of UFOs. He's finding all the commanding officers that are off world right now. So what I'm getting to is like the whole collective conscious, and that's why we're here, my brother is to come together and go, hey, man, do your own research. Don't believe anything we say, but I'm telling mm -hmm. you, start doing your own research and going, whoa, I had no idea. And the whole point of us being here together is to stop the, whoa, I didn't know that. It's to go, yeah. oh, I get it. Because now you can counter manifest or counter some of these negative things they're trying to push forward, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and once, and this, like I said, 2024, my biggest goal is to start making this message mainstream. I think I may have said mm -hmm. that in the last interview. But the minute the minute that we start putting this message out and getting it mainstream, like like, you know, you I've even heard a couple of people who have like had mainstream platforms start to talk about all oh, the yeah. whole spirituality and manifestation thing. So I, I know that they're kind of starting to drip it in there a little bit. But, right. the, the, but I think the minute that we can make this become mainstream, because pretty much if you really pay attention to it now, now the people are trusting the mainstream media less and less and less. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. People like me and you and alternative media sources were yep. the news now more than the, the mainstream and, media. And they know that the, the forces that are controlling this, the good forces that are controlling this. Right. It's very controlled. Um, now, that doesn't mean because we're still in the middle of a war. That doesn't mean that nothing bad is going right. to happen. There will be bad things that happen. There will be loss of life, but very minimized compared to what it would have been if the dark side really would have won. Yep. So there, it's going to be controlled in such a way that the majority of the people who aren't awake right now are going to get slapped awake. And yep. I, I don't want to see that have to happen to anybody because, you know, that... It's not going to be fun. We told you this was going to happen. They have to take this thing to a situation where it has to crash. Look at Evergreen in China. There's people riding all over China that paid money for condos, okay, mm -hmm. that were not finished. And they're riding in the streets because they took all their wealth, put it in these building projects that didn't, then were not there to completion to a degree where it was the whole thing is just upside down. And I'd like to say something too about these different nations kind of vying for stuff. What I can say is honestly, there is a rhyme and a reason in this universe for the way that things are rolling out right now. Everything is kind of in accordance with what has been agreed upon by the upper dimensions as they flow down into the lower dimensions, okay? There are certain rules and regulations on this planet of what our spiritual brothers and sisters and our Star Alliance guys, our Earth Alliance, can do. Mm 
And like my brother said, they're not going to do it for you. They want you to do it. It's a part of universal law. But we can take our world back in a non-violent way. And at the same time, too, I've also been like, you know, for everyone out there, you are 100,000% allowed to protect your life and the life of your family. And don't let any government or person take that away from you. I'm not saying going out there and do violence. No, what I'm trying to say is that you, if you're, you know, per, you know, something pops off and you guys, you know, something's coming at you, you have a hundred thousand percent right to protect your life. That's that's how it is on this planet. So if you need to do whatever you need to do to protect yourself, so be it. We're not inciting conflict. But we're allowing you as civilians on this planet, all of us together as a brothers and sisters to go, hey, we're not going to tolerate that. You know what I mean? And there's there's plenty of people in law enforcement that would tell you the same thing. You are mm -hmm. allowed to protect yourself, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what uh, we're planning on. We're uh, we're prepared over here. <laughs> I think you could be prepared if you know what I mean. And that's not yeah. inciting conflict. It's, it's nope. to say if conflict comes to you. Yeah. Then then make sure that you're protected. Yeah. So let's talk, you know, let's talk briefly about um, Bastrop. Shit. Our, our conference that's popping off in April. Um, these are some of the concepts we're going to bring forth. And obviously, we're going to be there in a very personal way. And I will spend time with some people, um, not only in my presentation. I'm going to walk you through kind of how to get steer around some of this conflicts and some of these things. What do you think about that, brother? Yeah, yeah. And that, that again, encompasses everything that I'm going to be teaching at the conference, because like I said, it's kind of paradoxical because it's very complex, but very, very simple at the same time. So my goal with what I have to talk about is that once you understand the inner workings of, let's just take fear, for example, because like you said, you know, we want to be able to help people right. not, not go into fear. Well, once right. you understand what the energy of fear does and right. how, and how, the matrix around you responds to that energy. You won't allow yourself to fall into fear. It's, right. it's I mean, it, it's kind of that simple, but it's complex at the same time, too. What's so complex about it is that it's wired into your subconscious mind and written right. into your DNA. That's what's mm -hmm. complex about it. So whenever whenever you have certain inner programs that are subconscious and written into your DNA, it's happening without you realizing it. So taking conscious control and rewriting the neural circuitry of your own brain and reprogramming your own DNA can be a complicated process. But once you understand the, the science behind it and how it mm -hmm. works, it becomes easier to buy into the process and say, OK, all right, well, I understand how that works now. I see it. It makes sense. I'm going to start doing this. Does that make sense? Right. So, no, 100 percent. You know, fear, false evidence appearing real mm -hmm. fear, you know, um, there's two things I like to say about fear. One is when a human body or a human in general is in survival mode, you're going to be locked into your lower chakras of, you know, like, and your frequency or vibration drops. When you're in fear, your actual DNA, they've tested it, it just stops expanding. It won't grow. It mm -hmm. shrivels. So imagine your DNA is like a flower. Yeah. As soon as you're in fear, whoop, closes up. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is that you can't see things coming if you're in fear. OK, and mm -hmm. why I'm expressing this to everyone is we're the ones who are supposed to help our friends and family, our parents, our grandparents, when they're getting super freaked out and they've been, you know, asleep majority of their life. We're the ones that go, no, mom, dad, grandma, grampy, cousin, uncle, calm down. This was supposed to happen. They go, what? Dude, we've been waiting for this thing to clap for 14 years. Yeah. There's information, ladies and gents, that Bill Clinton and uh, Bush Jr. were illegitimate presidents. This whole thing should have collapsed in 99. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? If you go into the governmental things and how everything works out in the financial system and these last three presidents never should have existed. The experience is mm -hmm. what has been taken from us. And I think that may be another reason why we're getting the med beds back. Why we're getting some yeah. technologies back. Okay, you put us in a med bed. You give me those 30 years back. You give me those 40 years back. You give us our birthright of all mm -hmm. the things that these breakaway societies who are human have hidden from us. Okay, maybe that'll work its way out in 50, 60, 70 years. So I'm trying to say there's a rhyme and a reason that this stuff goes on. But you also have to play the game with there are be beings that sit outside of time 
who are yeah. monitoring this game who for you know for us it feels like an eternity for them it's that fast seven mm-hmm. years is i re- step out of the time stream step over here step back in so how do you feel about some of those things and in, in our experiences because you know some of the things we've experienced down here is are pretty are pretty gnarly you know yeah yes absolutely and again i will keep beating this drum we okay let me put it to you like this if if they were going to come and help us like if if our star families were going to come and just help us me and you wouldn't have had to incarnate into this skin suit to come here and help change the game that's exactly. the whole reason that's the whole reason why we're here exactly because the only way that the our star families can help us is by incarnating as a human and changing the game from within right and that's our assignment like so i mean absolutely because people don't understand that this thing right here this is nothing new this has been around right. since the 50s and yep. and the technologies that they have right now are so mind-bogglingly unreal that it would blow your mind right and and they're just waiting they're just back there waiting for us to expand our consciousness enough to be able even be able to wrap our mind around the possibility that that exists yep. and and we're going to get there we're getting there slowly but surely but it is it is incredibly frustrating i don't know how you feel about it but me as a light worker I, it's it's very frustrating you know right well just, you know <clears throat> the more you know unfortunately with you know i wish it wasn't the case but sometimes for expanded evolution at a very accelerated rate the way to do that sometimes is conflict. You know what I mean? Because yeah. mm-hmm. if we chose, like I said, imagine, like, just compare it to the Pleiades. If 99.95% of all of the species that live in the Pleiades, the seven sisters, are not interstellar, and there's like 10 that are, what did those 10 go through to become interstellar? that the others chose not to. You know what I mean? Like, what is it? I mean, you're going to have uh, things that work, things that don't work. You're going to have, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> positive and negative, right? Who do you have to interact with? But my thing with experiencing through conflict is I believe there's a lot, there's a higher level of training that's going on on this planet right now between us. And I believe that as we balance our multidimensional selves and we go ahead and, and you know, view everything that we've gone through in the physical emotionally. Like, I feel like we're in emotional rehab because the only thing this place can do is keep you asleep. They can't stop you how powerful you are. So if there are just waves and waves of consciousness and and distractions to keep you from finding your way home in your heart and stepping into your power, what I can say is once you find yourself and once you find your power, how you wield that comes with your emotional maturity. The experiences that you have learned on this planet, you may be the one in charge on a different planet and now you're up in the spaceship and you paid your dues and you're like, hey, don't do that. You've seen every single thing the night side and the lower densities have thrown at you. I mean, how many names can we casually just throw out right now about we should go ahead and adjust these beings and take these guys out and move them out of the equation. I, I have at least a hundred I can name, right? What I'm getting like, what's really slowing us down? But the truth is these lessons that we're learning are reflections for our own self growth. Because if we steer into the night side negativity thing, those vibrations are con- conscious is going to pull you down where mm-hmm. we really want to be up here. So it's like, how do we deal with all this negative stuff, but still stay high vibe brother? Yeah. Yeah. That's tricky. That's, that's, it's, one that's of the, the mastery, man. Yeah. It's tricky to explain it. I mean, it's simple to do again. It's paradoxical. It's simple to do, but it's tricky to explain to be able to balance the energies. And I think the understanding that this is a game is what really helps me be able to balance right. the energies because right. so many people are so locked into the outside world and the matrix as if this is all there is. As if what they can see, hear, smell, taste, touch is all there is. And when you're locked into that, then it is very difficult to balance those positive and negative energies. But whenever you do go within and then you connect to your higher self and you actually connect to a tangible, palpable frequency that exists beyond this third dimension that you can feel, then you understand that the positive and the negative are all just fractals of the whole source that's, that's casting down the shadow that turns into this dimension. So it's much easier to step away and just allow the energies to balance themselves, you know, and explaining how to get people to understand that is the tricky part. But once you figure it out, man, it's easy. 
Yeah, and we are the catalysts of change. So my thing is like, why are some of us star seeds and angelics? Why do we see things so casually that other people don't see? Mm-hmm. What they don't talk about is the operators who are conscious. It could be you guys out there. I am awake when I'm sleeping and I'm awake right now, 24-7, 365. It never shuts off. And I think a lot of us have to deal and practice certain, you know, like I said, how do we do it? Me, I have a routine. I got to go to the gym. I got to steam. I got to work out. I'm sure you have your little meditation practices. I'm sure you, it's a consistency thing. You have to be able to balance the physical and the spiritual world. You know, I say, what's the best, you know, equation? It's one foot in the spiritual, one foot in the, in the material, in the physical. And the most casual way you can do that and to catch more bees with honey, you don't catch bees with fear. Like, you know what I mean? It's, Hey, have you guys thought about this? Hey, have you guys thought about that? Hey, don't you think it's kind of interesting that after the Roswell crash, you know, where do you think fiber optic cables came from? That was one of the things they pulled off that ship was fiber optic communication, right? Now we're all sitting here with our internet, well, not in Sedona, but I mean, you know, high speed internet, that's awesome, right? When I'm getting to how many things are being implemented into our collective consciousness where they're not really showing the true source of where some of these technologies come from. You know, mm-hmm. so, um, you know, I just wanted to share that. And like I said, brother, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you. I mean, we're going to crush and let's talk about Austin, man. We're going to crush out there. So talk about, I mean, I, David's going to be on the DJ and I know David's going to be out there crushing yeah. the Leo King. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. And then, uh, as far as the manifestation stuff, you know, if you want to tell some of the beings on your audience, you know, what are some of the, the positive things for meeting people in person? You know, I'm sure there's some, some people that have been watching you for years and now they're going to get to meet you in person. Yeah, well, it's it's uh, a, an amazing experience when I do meet people in person because mm-hmm. I'm normally when I'm, you know, in my personal life, I'm a very quiet, introverted person. I'm exactly. a pro- yeah. projector in human design. You know, I'm I'm an introvert, so I'm actually normally very quiet. So even doing this right now drains me, you know, because Mm -hmm. I get very rapidly drained and I have to speak and speaking of meditation. As soon as I get off here, I'm going to have to meditate to recharge before I can get the rest of my work done. But when when I meet people in person, like you actually get to see that real true have that connection that that man, you know, those of us who are down here doing this work, it really actually makes a difference. You know, yes, it does. Yeah. And to be able to see that in person really really helps you know raise the vibration and and because sometimes even even i get caught in my own little bubble world sometimes and i start thinking man is is the words that come out of my mouth even making a difference you know and then right when you get to meet people and you get to see the difference that it makes and then that just makes it like 10 times stronger i love it i love it that's literally what what makes me want to do these conferences is seeing everyone light up seeing my friends and family seeing my you know A lot of these beings that are coming to this uh, conference, these are beings that we work with upstairs every single day, maybe for five or 10 years. And when you actually, their vessel shows up, I'm like, what's up? It's like, it's cool meeting them in the physical. You know, a lot of these beings are uh, upstairs, are officers, med officers, um, Mm -hmm. angelics, light workers. But it's good to remind us that we are not alone. We're in this together. And, you know, with the advent of this technology, how we can reach across the planet and talk to one another, that is really cool. And I would say that's probably the coolest thing I can say about technology, period, as of right now, is the fact that I can talk to my brother across the country and we can communicate. And I think that um, that's something that we do upstairs naturally, telepathically, Mm -hmm. but you know, having the ability down here in the physical, you know, it's quite awesome. And uh, for everyone, you know, that's coming, get ready. You know, we're gonna, we're bringing in some heavy hitters and we're here to really open your mind, share with you some real up-to-date intel and like I said, my brother's going to be talking about manifestation and how to crush on that. And uh, I'm going to be kind of filling in the gaps with a lot of the stuff that the civilian world and us as light workers and light warriors and healers and stuff, we need to know this stuff before the population. We're the ones that they're going to be leaning on. You know what I mean? So this is really, you know, a sharing of content for f- between one another because I want everyone that rolls with us. I would probably be honest with you and say the 144, you know, I mean, you know I'm saying all of us like the real 144, um, you know, I, I'd say 144,000, but listen, it's a big planet. I like to say 144 million. All right. That's what I like to keep it at. Right. But us getting together and sharing those downloads and realizing that that one person that you touch or hook up and give them that download or energetically clear them just by being in your space. 
Mm -hmm. that maybe they've been dealing with something for 20 years and you just go, come here, bro. Boom. Now go get your whole family, your whole village and your whole town up. We are the catalysts of change. And my brother, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure being with you here today, being that you change. Too, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you yeah. for having me on. We're going to kill it, man. 2024 is going to be a big year and it's going to be a big Let's go, year. dude. Absolutely, man. We're going to make some big changes and, and we're all going to get through it. It's all going to be okay. I mean, yes. you know, for some people, this is going to be one of those years that there's going to be some people who rise to the top and some people who sink to the bottom. And uh, my, my job as an individual and my goal with connecting with everybody is to try to minimize the amount of people that sink to the bottom this year, you know? Right. So, We'll get there one way or the other, and we'll pop out the other side into a newer, hey, brighter future. Hey, look, from one boatman to another, hey, we got plenty of life vests and those little, I'll be throwing those off into the water. Just hold on, okay? <laughs> yeah, All right, man, till, till next time, peace. Eyes closed and dreams go free. Got an angel next to me Hold me close so I can breathe Let me go so I can live Where do we go from here? Take me far away so we can stop the time And love will take its place Where do we go from here? Take me far away So we can stop the time And love will take its place It will be tonight when I Turn off the world for you and me it will be tonight when I turn up the stars for you.